Hello, today is August 18th, 2009. We're meeting today with Mr. Joe Armejo, Armejo. Uh, at his home in Fort Collins, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans participating today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start out if we could. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, where you're born, okay. a little bit about your family. <laughs> Okay, my uh, my dad went into the service and from uh, New Mexico. He went after his discharge. He went to San Luis Valley in Southern Colorado. I was born September 29, nineteen. It's a little small town in San Luis Valley. When I was uh, one year old. Uh, 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 Great Western Sugar Company contacted my dad, so they were farmed out to Fort Collins area, and I went to grade schools in uh, Fort Collins. Uh, my folks uh, were sharecroppers in uh, in uh, well, the uh, western part of the town. I remember the town only had about 9,000 people population at the time. Uh, so I was raised in a farm. I went to District 16 school, at, which is now at Drake and, uh, and uh, Shields. And we used to walk to school, have ball. I mean, we never used a road. We crossed fields and everything. And uh, so, uh, we had a lot of fun, he had great friends, and when uh, I went to high school, I had everything. I used to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, milk cows, and, uh, and I had my own set of casts and stuff. So it was uh, a job and a hobby and whatever you call it. Uh -huh. anyway, uh, and I used to deliver the the milk to the dairy and myself, and then go to school. And uh, <coughs> I had a lot of good friends in school. And I mean, we it was, at that time everything was family. I mean, yeah. and my folks used to have uh, gatherings. Uh, the whole neighborhood would come over, and we'd have a pig roast or whatever. <laughs> I'll, or the next week we'd go someplace else and have it, and uh, and I used to have a, my own team of mules, and uh, it was a wonder. I used to hit the road across the field, and they were there. I mean, they would greet me, Is that right? and they were jolly as all heck, and we got, and they wouldn't. Uh, nobody could put a harness on me except me. And he was, uh, I remember my dad saying, you better stop doing that because we have to put him to work. And uh, well, they, they finally traded the team off. I mean, it, it was, they couldn't do nothing with him unless <laughs> I did it. Anyway, and, uh, and our summers were great. Uh, my dad, uh, uh, form, uh, him and his friends and everything, they formed a thrashing machine team and everything. We had fun. And I used to have more fun with him because, uh, and I used to enjoy their meals. They used to have their own yeah. meals and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, well, that was my ages going to school. Did you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I had uh, f uh, four brothers and one sister. And how did you fit into the pack? Yeah. But where were you in the pack? I was second to the last. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, two of my brothers they served in the service uh, in the service. And uh, anyway, when we was going to school, uh, I. I used to go off a track and everything, but it was uh, no no training or nothing because I used to just run from home to school <laughs> and 
and the coach says, hell, that's enough training. It's just good. And uh, I, I, as short as I was, I could out run the other guys at the mile and everything. And, and I held a record for the mile for quite a while. Is that Even right? Even though I was short. And, <laughs> and, and they would looked at me and Macy, but it was just the upbringing, I think. Uh -huh. Right, okay. And, uh, Okay, so that was my childhood and everything, and my, before I graduated, I went, uh, we was talking in the, in the gym there, and, and I says, I'm not going to be a foot soldier. Now the war, you were still in high school when the war broke out? Yes. Do you remember yes. where you were when you heard that Pearl Harbor had been bombed? I went, uh, when uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed, I was, uh, we came in for dinner, and, uh, and this was at the farm and, and everything, and we came in for dinner and everything, and, and uh, it was must have been about 1.30 or so, I was ready to go out, and the radio broadcast came on, and my dad says, no, 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 this couldn't be it, this couldn't be it. Yeah, we was amazed. So we back and sat, of course, it was just no video at that time, right. just the radio. Right, yeah. And <clears throat> so we just do it, and then it, uh, uh, so my dad uh, says, well, yeah, I don't know, it's, I know what it's all about, so he says, we just have to wait and see, and that was it. And then uh, they, uh, they, well, one of my, my oldest brother, he, uh, <coughs> he got a draft notice, and then they wanted to uh, give him deferment because he was a farm boy. Right, right. And uh, he said, no, no, no. I'm going to go. He said, because, he says, you guys, they'll have farm help all over. So he went to the service early. And then, uh, of course, my younger brother, he didn't go in until after the war was over. Mm -hmm. But coming back to the situation there where we was in the gym, yeah. And I told uh, my buddies and everything, I'm not going to be a foot soldier. And I know I'm going to get drafted. And so, so there was eight of us, went to the recruiter. And uh, I, I told him my story. I said, I'm not going to be a foot soldier. I want to go to the Air Corps. And he said, no problem. He says, so I'm pretty sure, he says, you're in demand. That's what he told me. Yeah. Anyway, okay. <laughs> yeah. so when, so when uh, he's, we sat down and he took all our address and all that, anyway, he says, sure. He says, uh, and I told him, of course, I want to graduate. Mm -hmm. And he says, no problem. He says, so we, I left and we left and, uh, well, anyway, this was April the 1st, uh, 43. 43, okay. And then, uh, so everything was normal and I, I told my mom that I had gone to volunteer and she kind of, but she didn't say nothing. I mean, she kind of left it to my dad to, <laughs> but now, could you have got a deferment for being on the farm, or what? could you have gotten a deferment yes. for being on the farm, but you decided against uh, that yeah. as well, huh? Yeah, yeah. Spe uh, especially that because I had taken ag in high school and all that, so I raised my own. So it was, anyway, so uh, and finally my dad says, oh, you, you made the right decision. Says you. He says, you, 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 if you get deferred, he says, you would feel bad about it. Mm. I know you would. And it was good conversation. And uh, anyway, so September, I mean, uh, April the 7th, we get a letter. 
and mom was crying. And she says, uh, you're not going to graduate. You're going to go to the service. And I says, what? Yeah. She sent me the letter and it says report for duty April 15th. Now, would you, was it, uh, would you have graduated that May then? I would have graduated that uh, May. Uh, anyway, so uh, I went, uh, went to school the following morning and uh, went to, uh, and uh, after school, I went to see the recruiter and I showed him the letter. And he says, oh, you'll get your diploma. He says, there's no problem. He says, but there's a demand somewhere there for you, he says. So he says, you got it. Okay, so uh, April 15th, I, I went down, and the recruiter came and picked me up and everything, and took me to the bus depot, gave me a ticket to Fort Logan. Now, were you by yourself or any of your eight buddies with yeah, you? Yeah, I think I was by myself. The other guys didn't get drafted, though. Huh. And, uh, I mean, they didn't go in yeah. time until afterwards. Anyway, when I got to Fort Logan, I mean, it was a rush thing. They went and gave me an exam and everything, and, and uh, it was amazing. Then one, uh, uh, there was some sergeant came in, and he says, huh, well, kind of, uh, I was short. I was only five foot two. Anyway, he left and everything and everything. And the, uh, that guy was giving me the exam and everything and your rise and everything and she had you. Anyway, he told that guy to shut up and get the heck out of there. Anyway, so uh, he, you no, know, they says no, no problem, you're in. So they, I was there only three days. And I, they shipped me out to Kernsfield in Utah. And did you have a chance to come back home between then? Or yes, oh, okay. I came home anyway uh, to visit and everything. And my brothers, they drove me back. They didn't want me to take the bus. They said, "No, no." Anyway, it was, it was. Uh, we was had family tags. I mean, real yeah. tight. Uh, so it must have been hard <laughs> that day for your mom to see you off. Uh, yeah. I imagine it. Yeah. When, See, I had uh, my two other brothers. Yeah, well, one went with the service. The other ones, two, they did take the uh, deferment, mm -hmm. and mostly they didn't come up mom. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. And uh, and anyway, uh, so when I was in Kearns, Utah, I went uh, there for basic and everything. And they says, you'll be here all, what, see, so 13 weeks or something, I forget now, anyway. But no, it was about the fourth week I was in there, and here comes a runner into the barracks, and he says, Joe, he says, they want you at the uh, uh, adjutant's office. So I went up there, and he says, get your gear together, you're going to uh, Colorado. I said, oh boy, that's another. And uh, so, yeah, he says, there's an opening of some kind, he says, and you're, you're, there, you're in demand, and you don't, where you're going, you don't need this basic. Huh. And I'll be done. So I always said, they sent me to uh, Buckley Field, Air, uh, Colorado, and I went, went through armament school. And that was another fast thing. They were, they had a class in there and then they says, oh, uh, you've got to go through a uh, fighter uh, armament and all that. They told me, no, you're just, you're going to just regular special. So they sent me to one area there and it was just, and it was, I was only there about uh, seven weeks altogether. Did they give you any sort of idea what they were preparing you for? After I, I was there at Buckley Field, they did. And I said, you're already a, practically assigned. He said, once you finish this, he says, you're practically assigned already to an outfit. Anyway, so I was there at Buckley Field. I, they mostly they taught me about aircraft armament and all that. 
And uh, so uh, I didn't even get a degree there. I just got noticed in the paper and everything and got traveling. And says, you're going home on leave. So I came home on leave and when I went back to Buckley Field, he says, you're shipping out. Wow. So I went to Tinderfield, Florida, Panama City. And it was gunnery school. So then I knew what it was. So when they gave me the gear and all that, I knew I was what I was <laughs> up for. So I went through gunnery school and it was more like a rush thing too. Uh, I think I was only there about seven weeks mm -hmm. altogether. Anyway, by the time of April to the time I went overseas, I was only seven months. Wow. Ah. Anyway, so I uh, went uh, from Tindall Field, Florida. Uh, uh, I went to Barksdale Field, Louisiana. In, in Shreveport, and it was assigned to B-26. And uh, so uh, when I got there, they, uh, it was group team, you know, just look. And they said, you, so I was in, uh, I was in uh, adjutant's office there and everything, and he says, be in the assembly room tomorrow at 8 o'clock. He says, no, nothing. He says, you're going to get a sign. He says, you know enough. I went back to, and right away they introduced the pilot's name first, and then, and then the co-pilot, and then the uh, radio man, and then the flight engineer, and then the tail gunner. So when they announced Captain Schultz, well, if he was First, I mean, second lieutenant then, I introduced him. And he was looking around. He knew I was already assigned to him. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> so when my name came up, and I looked at him, and I said, he knew, he knew. <laughs> anyway, we got acquainted. So they took us out, and they took a, to get, got us together, and introduced us to each other, and we, talked to a little while and everything, and so then they lined us up, took a picture, and they says, all right, you guys, start your transition training tomorrow. So he said, you're going to get, uh, he says, the officers will get bunked together, you two guys will get bunked together, the enlisted guys. And uh, So a B-26 had a crew of six then? Yes. Okay, okay. And. Uh, so, uh, Shul uh, Chelsea, I'll call him Chelsea. Yeah, okay. Marvin was his real name. <laughs> and we got acquainted real quick. I mean, it was a first name thing, and, and so we went through transition, I mean, just training. And uh, we weren't there too long, but it, it, training was good, I mean. And so one day, uh, Schultz came in and he says, hey guys, he says, we're assigned. He says, we're going overseas to next week. Wow. He says, but, he says, I want to go talk and see if we can get a leave. And he did, he went up there and he, yeah. He, uh, they were real coordinated people, I mean, they, uh, look, if you ask something in, and uh, specified your things and everything. I mean, but if, if you're belligerent or something like that, they <laughs> kind of stamp, rubber stamp yeah. you. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, so I got, came home for uh, 10 days. Was that enough time to get there and back? I mean, because you had yeah. to probably jump trains and buses and. Well, no, they, uh, one funny thing, they, they uh, at that time, they. Uh, uh, we uh, drove to Montgomery, and uh, they got a flight oh, okay. different ways. And uh, we got a flight to Denver because Pewitts lived in Texas, and I lived in Denver, and, and uh, uh, Carr lived in Wichita Falls, Kansas. So we kind of mm. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, so after that, we went back, and, and no sooner we got uh, our gear together, boy, I mean, we. So they send vessels in me, which the, well, was a bombardier navigator. Uh, it sent him and I went to, uh, to New York, and the other guys flew over the plane overseas. And uh, when uh, we was there at Norfolk, uh, Virginia, he. Uh, uh, vessels and I said goodbye to the guys and everything. We boarded a train, went to New York, and we, and we went to New Jersey there, Four Sticks, and and right away there, when we got there, they the, they assigned me. Says you'll be boarding the ship. He says in, in about four or five days, and he says have your gear ready. Yep, so. Uh, Schultz and I, uh, I mean, Vessels and I went on ship, we went on the Mary, uh, Queen Mary ship. Wow. And anyway, and it was, uh, yeah, it was quite a trip, I mean. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that, because here's, here's a boy from Landlock, Colorado, getting on a sea, sea <laughs> ship. <laughs> yeah. did, did you get your sea legs, or how was that for you? Did you get seasick no, at all? Or? actually, it was uh, crowded. It was so packed. And uh, they had the army guys and this and that. I mean, the whole decks were full, and they only let us out uh, about two hours a day mm. on deck. And then you had to flit and then come back down and sit. How uh, was that for you? I mean, growing up uh, on a farm where you're wide ship. open, and now you're in this yeah. crowded. Uh, oh well, man, it was awful, <laughs> and the food was awful. Was it? Yeah. It was an English ship, and uh, man, there was nothing but potatoes and lamb and stuff. Like that. Well, now, how come you and Vessel didn't fly over with the rest of the crew? Because they had uh, the uh, they had the fuel over. Oh. Okay. And it was a, a weight problem. Okay. Because they had to fly from there. They flew to Puerto Rico and then to Tal, Brazil, and then to Ascension Island. And that a trip to Ascension Island was quite a trip, and they had to have both tank, big belly tanks on those things. Okay. They showed us right there before they took off. And, uh, and then they only had the uh, radio man and the engineer and the pilot, the co-pilot and the navigator. Okay, okay. And then they had another navigator that, in, uh, in, uh, and, and, uh that specified going that one route oh, okay. because they had to hit Sachin Island, yeah. which is only right. a mile, two miles square. Right, middle of the ocean. And then they went to Brazil on uh, uh, Marrakech, Morocco, and then and anyway, when we landed in uh, in Liverpool, England, uh, right away they picked uh, vessels and me and and says. Uh, you guys are boarding a riverboat, and so we we knew we was separated from the rest of the guys. And sure enough, there was only seven of us in that boat, kind of ferry type deal. And they took us to Ireland, and they says, uh, "You'll be your ride with your crew and everything here." And sure enough, they. He was only there about uh, about a day or so, and we got together again. And oh wow! Huh. So then when we went to uh, uh, Tombs, uh, Ireland, uh, we knew we was in Europe anyway. So that was it, and then we we was in. Uh, Ireland must have been about the oh, whole 20, 20 days or so, and and then finally Schulte came over and he says, "You're assigned to your, we're assigned to an outfit already." So he brought out the name of and it was a 397th bomb crew, and he says, "We're gonna we're gonna be up north of 
north of London. And uh, so uh, he says, so uh, they're picking us up here. Sure enough, we just said about uh, next day. And uh, we see them be 26 land, and I said, that's it, that's it. Sure enough. So we went to uh, Riverdale, uh, England, which is north of Chelmsford, which is about 40 miles north of London. And yeah, it was our outfit, 397. And it was uh, quite a gathering right off the bat. And uh, guys came over right away, and they was glad to see anybody yeah, new yeah. anyway. Uh -huh. And right away I got acquainted with a few guys, and uh, and then uh, they said, you guys are going to have a, we're having an assembly at 2 o'clock. And this was, must have been about 10. So then we went to Chow, and right away the guys showing us around real good. And uh, so we went there, and then we sat down in the assembly room, and. Yeah, well, it's more like a briefing room, a big mm -hmm. interrogation room. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, the commander came out and uh, he says, uh, which was uh, Mr. Ber uh, Colonel Merkenkamp, and he says, all right, you guys, you're going to be like brothers here and this and that. And he says, I'm not going to have no uniform regulations and everything because you're going to recognize the next guy like your brother. And he gave a good speech, wow. I mean, a uh, good one. Uh. And he says, watch your back, each other's back, respect and all that. Anyway, he gave a good brotherly love uh -huh. stuff. Uh -huh. and stuff. Uh, and sure enough, he came out of the, the briefing room and the guys came out of nowhere, introducing themselves and everything. And I, I got acquainted with a few guys, you know, Italian descent boys uh -huh, and some uh -huh. Spaniards and some. Right. Of it. And anyway, uh, right away it was like a brotherhood deal. Wow. Uh -huh. Tight. Uh -huh. And an old. Uh, Eddie Carr and, and Florence Peewitz, which was my radio and an and engineer, we bumped together and I mean, tell you, we, we were like brothers. Wow. At which we are today. Huh. And, and uh, so uh, we would go to chow together, do this and that together, and, uh, and like I say, the, the rest of the, the crew, and we dress up and got them. Of course, the officers had their bars and yeah. we had our stripes and yeah. everything. But they didn't. Uh, well, I, I wore green pants sometimes with a <laughs> the odd shirt and everything. And it was it was quite a thing. Anyway, uh, we was in Riverdale. We took our off on our first mission and. Of course, we was kind of leery. Oh, sure, you know? yeah. And of course, the other guys already had experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got an in intercom and said, "Watch this, watch that." Yeah. And it was quite a quite a thing. And then, and uh, so uh, it was routine. We was uh, uh, we flew out of Ribbendale and we were bombing bridges all over. Uh, and this was prior to the invasion, and uh, prior to invasion, mean D-Day? Yeah. Ooh. Anyway, this uh, we was uh, it, uh we we uh, was bombing different bridges all over, and uh, and uh, gun positions, I guess. Or, mm -hmm. you know, anyway, on D-Day, well. We, prior to D-Day, we got transferred to uh, Burns, uh, England, which is south by uh, Melbourne. I mean, it was way 
southern part of uh, England. Now the and whole was, group, or just yeah, your just your plane? Yeah, and this was just uh, right across the channel from, okay. from France. Anyway, we were flying missions out of there, and we was hitting the shores, and uh, <coughs> and uh, Chelsea would say, yeah, "He says we're sh trying to soften somebody here." Mm. Anyway, we was bummed, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, at that time we we got a briefing that uh, Germans were developing the the atomic age deal. You know. Oh right, yeah. The jet bombers. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> and uh, so one briefing we got there, and he says, "You guys are going to go in there, and you're, it's going to be a headache." Says because they're protecting that. Says so you're going to go in the ground level oh, wow. and bomb the uh, the sites, and it was quite a thing, because they were they were they had armament all around there and everything. But we got through and got by, and it was uh, <coughs> quite a thing. Now we uh, meant to ask you earlier: Were you the tail gunner or were you the other gunner? I was tail gunner. So you always had a front row seat to everything. No, I had, I observed everything after it happened. Yeah, right. <laughs> wow. But it was quite a thing, and it was, uh, and uh, well, we, uh, and then uh, D Day. Well, it was prior to D Day. We uh, uh, we flew over to take off, and I noticed uh, a lot of uh, army tents and everything way off side, and uh, didn't we didn't think nothing of it then. But and when I, we went up, when I hit a gun spot uh, off the shore there. And uh, so uh, this happened about uh, June 3rd or something like that. We got a notice, it was restricted to base, wear sidearms and everything. Wow. And I, which I got a letter here, which explains. Anyway, Cook, uh, our co pilot, made notes of it. Anyway, <coughs> uh, D day in the morning, we got uh, 11 o'clock at night. We got notice that we were alerted for next morning. And this was just oh, early in the morning, about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, so we flew. We got, and they says you're hitting gunpoints and so so. They didn't say the invasion or something. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. But when we took off, you could see all these ships and everything. Oh, I've heard that's just and, an amazing. It was an amazing yeah, sight. Yeah. You had a, probably an amazing. And right view. Away, soon as Chelsea circled, we circled and we formed out. In a way, when he headed out towards over the channel, he says, "This is it, boys. This is it." Wow. wow. <laughs> anyway. Of course, I couldn't see nothing at shore. Yeah. But I could see all the ships right. and everything, and go there. And then uh, we went south, and then came back right along the shoreline. And we skip bomb. We was right uh, at low level. Wow. And we skip bomb gunpoints and stuff. And uh, there was another outfit right behind us. And then we went uh, home. Went back to the base and we flew another mission. And uh, we was all enthused, I mean, about it, I mean, if you know it's going. And, uh, but then we got grounded uh, for a couple of days, kind of the weather really set in bad. Mm -hmm. And we was all, you could see the guys uh, tight, I mean, you know. And all glued up to the radios mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything. It, nobody was out there hip hop or nothing. Yeah. I mean, it, everybody was watching the news, and uh, and 
Were, were they giving you updates on how the invasion yes. was going and stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And they had, uh, it was uh, telling you about what was progressing and everything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then about, uh, let's, let's see, that was about the 9th. We start bombing behind the lines. And it wasn't shortly after that, when uh, after the invasion or everything took place, we was shipped right behind the lines. If they took over an airfield, we would land, we would really? operate from there. Wow. And that, the first one, I think it was in, uh, I guess forget El Elmo. And then we went to Drew. And then to, uh, uh, well, anyway, I got a list there. But we was right behind the lines. And we was everything. In fact, we had a lot of German guys surrendered to us. Is that right? <laughs> and uh, it was uh, it was quite a thing. I mean, uh, and we got we got. Uh, bombing all over. It was uh, quite hectic and everything. And that one time I was, uh, uh, after they delivered Paris, uh, we went on leave uh, to Paris and everything. And we went, sat, and we went, uh, saw, uh, we was watching the floor show uh, in Chelsea. Oh, we're in Paris. He said, let's go see the girls. <laughs> so we went and watched it. For, anyway, we were sitting there, and here comes this GI. He knew he was, just came in from the front lines, and he was bombed and everything. And he was looking for a place to sit down. And Schultz told him, hey, come on, sit down here. And so he sat down, and he had his cap crossways and everything, and we start talking to him. Yeah, he says, God, you guys are great. And, you know, we, we start praising each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, he, when the girls came on, he, that guy got up and he started flapping his head. And there was a full colonel sitting behind us. And he was, I don't know, yeah, kind yeah. of upgraded stuff. Anyway, he hollered at that GI, sit down, you GI, crane that cap and everything. Anyway, Schultz, he had made captain already. Anyway, <laughs> he, he got up and he told Carl, he says, this kid's been through hell and you've probably been sitting in some goddamn chicken shit office and everything. He said, you just dummy up. And he said, you might get my ass. He says, but you'll be first. Yeah, not them. That colonel got up and he left. <laughs> Didn't say a word. <laughs> and it was a jolly thing. And that GI was so goddamn enthused. Oh, he gave that huh. guy a hug and thing. And, and he was interested and it was nice. Yeah. And then uh Well how was well, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you here, but how was it? Here's a here's a boy. Many people like your generation didn't travel too far away from home growing up. You I imagine you just in the Fort Collins area. Now all of a sudden you've been all over the United States. Yeah. Ireland, England, now you're in Paris. What what was that like? That must have been really exciting for you. Oh yeah, yeah. it was, I mean, it was everything. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it was, they, every day was something. I mean, uh, uh, and of course I had a lot of nice ties in my family. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get nervous. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and another time we was in Paris, and uh, we used to have a blackboard, and you fill in your name and your hometown. Mm -hmm. Well, I filled my name on in the room number and everything, and about oh, we must have been in the room must have about an hour or so, kind of cleaning up, shaving everything, and somebody knocked on the door, and Pee would answer the door and. He, God damn, he says, there's a pilot out there, he says, and he's colored. And he says, he wants to see you. And I says, uh-oh. And it was John Mosley. 
he went to CSU. Is that right? <laughs> wow. And he was one of the Taco Vega you know, uh, fighter escort. Oh, the Tuscany, yeah, uh, from the Tuscany, uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he said, you from Fort Collins? And I said, yeah. No, he said, I'm John. And I said, hell yeah, I remember you playing football. And yeah, we got, got a kind of, we got talking and everything, and he was in this about four columns. Oh, everything. wow. Anyway, he says, damn it, Joey says, I, I got to leave tonight. He says, uh, I wish I said I'd had another day. Yeah, but we sat down, and it seemed like the four hours we spent together went like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, and uh, he says, yeah, when he, I showed him you know, some pictures of the airplane and everything. And he says, yeah, hell, we fought a score for you guys and everything. Wow. And it was quite a conversation. I'll be darned. And, huh. and, uh, and it was, uh, and then, uh, I mean, we uh, different missions all over the front lines. Anyway, uh, the one time, too, we was flying on a, a mission there, and the goddamn fight, uh, plane came off, and he was off in a business, not too close. But he was there, and he was flying, and all of a sudden, he just took off. And Schultz, he says, that was a strange, that goddamn airplane was like a ball. And it was one of those jets. jets. Wow. wow. And, but he didn't attack us or nothing. Evidently, they were fuel system was bad or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was it. Anyway, uh, uh, it was, it, uh, and the whole thing is, uh, Chelsea would teach us everything. I mean, he says, if I get into a problem, he says, you, you're going to be able to fly this airplane. Anyway, he, uh, he would teach us. Is that right? Yeah. And he, and I was short, and I was gonna be uh, so. He wheeled me up and fly, and I, I fly that airplane, and everything. And he says, "No, just always, the speed is a thing here." He says because we ain't got that much wingspan and all that. Anyway, it was, it was quite a crew. I wow. Was quite a crew. Uh, how how many missions did you guys end up flying all together? I flew sixty-five. Sixty-five missions. Yep. Really? Yeah, I got uh, the which is which is there. It's uh, the air metal, uh, several clusters, which is uh, hold that up here so we can get. Well, we'll, we'll get a picture right here. <laughs> we'll get a picture right here in a minute. Anyway, and then the one signifies all over, Looks like that. See, and uh, one, and then this signifies ten, and this is five. And this is one. Well, now is that uh, was that a common amount of missions? I know, like the, the larger bombers only would like fly like thirty five yeah. so missions. No, so, uh, our medium bombers used to fly uh, more. Is that more right? Of, uh, wow. Shorter. Wow. Yeah. And then that's the distinguished flying cross. Okay, that uh, the distinguished flying cross was December twenty third of uh, forty four. Uh, that was during the Battle of the Bulge, and it was bad weather, and we hadn't flown for a couple of days or so. And then when I remember December the 23rd, they got us up early, and they says, uh, we're taking me off before sunrise. He says, we got to get over this one area. And sure enough, we went, uh, is uh, you could see where the front line was mm -hmm. and everything. So we had a bomb of a bridge in, in Aller, Germany. And uh, when we went in there, we hit flak all over. I mean, they were, they were protecting something there. And when we bombed the bridge, we turned around and everything, and then we got attacked by 50 bombers. I mean, fighters. Oh, jeez. And they came in, I mean, from the sun, you know. Yeah, I couldn't and, see it. And uh, anyway, they, uh, when they one made, uh, the forum made a sweep around the, uh, our tail there, 
after they had already hit us and they're trying to get the, the lead, we was playing, we were flying lead on the, on the, on the B flight, which A and then B and then C here. Anyway, when they came around here like that, evidently they didn't uh, uh, recognize the speed of the B-26 because we would fly at a good high rate of speed. And then that fighter stood up. Anyway, when he came by like that, and I was, we were sitting here. When he came by in here, I could see his, his 20 20 shooting out. And I opened fire on him, and I kept right on him and everything. And I, and I mean, I was cussing up a storm, <laughs> that's the <your> truth. Yeah. <laughs> you best <see, laughs> be in yeah. everything. Anyway, uh, I could hear he, he hit us, you know, but nothing. Anyway, I finally got him and he blew up. And when he blew up, boy, I mean, he seemed like a, a, quite a relief, boy, and I mean, tell you, I, I said a prayer instead of cussing them. Uh, oh, wow. And anyway, uh, uh, we got attacked with the, any the more, but uh, it was quite from a distance because they couldn't. Uh, our airspeed saved us. To oh, okay. The truth. Okay. And uh, anyway, when uh, we landed and everything, we got uh, the the our air crew guy came by and he says, "You guys got hit." And uh, I says, "Why?" He says, "Look." And it was 20 millimeter shells in there, but they didn't explode like they normally would. And, they was, and one was stuck right above on, on the tail. Right yeah. above you. Man, yeah, he was stuck. Anyway, he took that off and gave it to me. And, but I lost it somewhere. I mean, you know. Anyway, so uh, we... Uh, we went to uh, briefing room and everything, and we lost, uh, we lost quite a few airplanes then, you know, and everything. And we got the presidential citation for that, the kind of the way we bombed instead of running off. And mm -hmm. everything. Anyway, and uh, so and we was after that. We supported the ground, the ground fighters all the time, and it was uh, quite a thing. They, they uh, got acquainted with a lot of guys, and, and uh, like that's one thing. Our our CO group commander, he says, everybody is like brothers here. He says, you guys supply in, that guy's a, a tank. This guy is just nothing but a rifle guy. He says, you're all brothers. Man. And then he spoke straight up. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we went on leave, not leave, but transferred to an armament tank outfit. And the Cornier says, you guys are going to go up there and he says, seven days. He said, get a cradle with me. And uh, sure enough, we went over there on a big truck and everything. Got us got with an outfit and sure enough they were great guys and get you one of them tanks and I says no way boy I got <laughs> one of them tanks and I said jeez <laughs> that was wor worse than being in that small tail of mine and I was, you know, oh man and everything and uh, and I'd like to say their our shout was uh, like a Banquet every day instead of theirs, because oh, they were every... eat out of cans oh, and right, stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, and I, I praised those guys. I'll tell you. And then we went to a, a, a army outfit, but they was big wrecking off the lines and everything. We just had a visit with them, but it was huh. quite a thing. Wow, wow! And you get to respect the other guys. That's the whole thing. Right. And. Uh, Anyway, so, and 
after Christmas in uh, 45, the, our crew, well, Pewitz finished his missions, Petty Car finished his missions, Vessels finished his missions, and Cook. So, it was Schultz and I was the only ones left. And uh, so, uh, when I was there, uh, oh, in the middle of January, they called me in and they said, uh, are you familiar with the bombardier's job and everything? I said, yeah, because we just trained to mm -hmm, do that. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, you're going to be a toggler now for a while. He said, we're short of bombardiers. And that's where I got this, uh, this bombardier wings. So I was flying. Of course, I wasn't actually watching the eyesight. It was, you just watch the lead airplane. Okay. And you release the bombs and open the bomb bays and then release the bombs. But uh, he says, no, you're just like a bombardier now. Anyway, so, but uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, Chelsea and I uh, left uh, the outfit at the same time. We flew into uh, uh, Birmingham, England, and everything, and and he uh, he says uh, we're going to go home on the ship. And I said, uh, what ship? He said the Queen Mary. He says we're going to go to Liverpool again. Uh, and that was quite a trip home. Of course, I was coming home, so I yeah. didn't care. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I said, I can starve for six days. <laughs> anyway. Uh, now, had the war ended or you had just flown your missions? No, this, we just had already completed our okay. tour and okay. everything. I mean, uh, so we came home. Uh, anyway, we landed in New Jersey. And as we came into the in New York, seen the Statue of Liberty mm. and everything, they let us off on deck and everything, wow. notch everything. And uh, we went to Fort Dix, New Jersey again. And the first thing I did was went to the PX and got me a big old jug of milk. Because oh. <laughs> always drinking over there was dehydrated stuff. Yeah, right, right, right. Anyway, and, uh, and I enjoyed it and everything. And, uh, so I was only there for one day, and they says, you guys want to leave? You can go to town and everything. I said, hell with the town. I said, I want to get home. And sure enough, so we was there, and, uh, and uh, so uh, one of the travel guys came by, and he says, he called my name out, and he says, here, here's an envelope. And I says, they accept what? He says, you're in charge of this one bunch. <laughs> so I was in charge of a bunch. So we went, we came to a, 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 I was coming to a Fort Logan. Anyway, we stopped in different towns, and I would have to give the conductor the tickets or whatever. Oh, right. <laughs> anyway, we got to Denver and uh, and uh, well I didn't have a chance to let my folks are coming I was coming home. Wow. Anyway, we got we got to uh, Denver and uh, this uh, I called home and we, which, of course, at that time was party line. And uh, <coughs> so I called home, and uh, and a neighbor answered the phone. <laughs> and I said, This is Joe. I said, I'm home here in Fort Logan. Get hold of my mom. And uh, of course, my mom wouldn't talk to the phone. So my dad did. And boy, he was jolly there. Oh, boy. And he, anyway, I came home in a bus, and then it was amazing when I got home. Yeah, well, I bet that homecoming was something, huh? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, anyway, I was 
got her home and by her, it seemed like uh, they let uh, had her brother in Sheridan and Wyoming and and the other one was home and we had her get together that a couple of days afterwards and uh, yeah, it was quite a thing. Oh, I bet your mom must have been oh, so relieved to see you walk through the door. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. yeah. Huh. She was quite a lady. Uh, I came home on leave when I came back from home from Tindall Field. She took my wings. She went to church. Uh, I got her blessed. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and then uh, when uh, after I, I had my leave at home, I went back to uh, Buck. Uh, to Fort Logan, and anyway, uh, he says, he says, uh, what's this? So I says, what, what's what? And he says, you're, you're going to cadet school. He says, you're too short. And I says, yeah, I know. I said, but uh, Chelsea sent a letter to the Adjutant General, recommended me and everything, and I know he got the letter back. And uh, and uh, so they looked at the files, and sure enough, there was a letter from the Adjutant General huh. that I was to be uh, accepted as a air cadet. Wow. Anyway, so they they, they uh, sent me to Santa Ana, California, in a basic. And uh, when I got there, Ben uh, went in the attitude and was sitting there and he kind of laughed and everything. Anyway, I told him, I don't care what the hell. He says, uh, so anyway, I was there and went on field trips and everything, you know, everything, and survival stuff and everything. Anyway, come Saturday, they'd have a marching review. And here comes a runner. Army ho, army ho, yeah, yeah. He says, a CO wants to see you. And he, I go, and I sit there by him, reviewing the band, and I told him, I says, how come? Uh, he says, they'll try to recule you because you're too short. Huh. He says, and there's no use for that. He says, you sit here. <laughs> wow. And it was good. Anyway, I was there about, uh, for, see, about four weeks, somewhere around in there. And, uh, and one day I was, a runner come over and he says, Joe, he says, uh, Addison wants to see you. So I figured, oh, so send him flight school or something. Anyway, got in there and he says, uh, Joe, sit down. He said, let's review this. And, he says, first thing, if you get an okay to go home, will you get go home? And I said, yeah, why? He said, according to this new thing, he says, you get five points for every year you served in service, five points for every medal, and if you acquire 40 points, he says, you earn your discharge. And I says, honest? Yep. He says, you got over 40 points in your medals alone. Jeez. And so, he says, you're going home. And I go, wow. <laughs> wow. Uh. And uh, sure enough, and uh, it wasn't over two days. I boarded the train home and came. And I got to Fort Logan again. And they were amazed at Fort Logan. She says, boy, <laughs> You, you've done your thing, so what the hell, you burned it. And we had came home and the people were all amazed. How I was getting discharged and all that. And, uh, it was quite a thing. Mm. And then, uh, so uh, when I was home, I, they were, uh, I went, uh, to apply for a job and everything, I was uh, 
during the summers and all that and everything. So I went and they says they need uh, need some personnel over in the ordnance depot in Sydney, Nebraska. He said you fit you fit perfect for that. So he should send me uh, out to Sydney. And I was there with just make sure the ordinance was shipped right and everything. But you were a civilian there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I was there civilian. After that, uh, it was normal life. Uh, how, how was that uh, that transition going from everything you'd been through overseas uh, on your bombing missions, the military life, now going back to civilian life? Was that much of a change? Much of an adjustment for you? Uh, not. Not really with me, with us. Oh. And like you say, uh, uh, we formed a lot of family ties though in the service. Yeah. I'll show you a picture later on. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, Eddie and Carr and I, or the whole crew, we remain close relationship. It's just like a family. Hmm. Uh, Have you guys gotten together over the years? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. And they, uh, like my wife and I went to Kansas City one time, and Herb Cook was our co-pilot, and he, when he was having the reunion there and everything, uh, his family, while well, he had lost his wife and the girls had lost their mother, and my wife went up there, and boy, they took like Dolores, like if there was their mother, and all. Oh, they just uh, adored her and everything. Huh. They just uh, showed her a great time and everything. And like I say, we remained friends. Yeah. yeah. And I've gone to reunions, uh, and the same thing happened for me, you know, everything. Uh, we meet each way. Uh, we meet one, uh, we have a reunion every year. But the 397? Yeah, and then, uh, no, the whole group. Oh, okay. The whole group has a reunion. Well, now, who was the, uh, what was the 397th Thunder? Were you in the 8th Air Force, or which? 9th. 9th Air Force, okay. 9th, yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is this back here. Okay, yep. See, 9th. Yeah, and, uh, <coughs> and it's, uh, but, and we exchange mail all the time, Christmas cards, this and that stories, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, well, like like you say, the three enlisted boys in our crew were farm boys, and uh, we knew kind of our lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, now, had you ever been up in an airplane before you joined the service? Now what? Had you ever been in an airplane before you before you went into the service? No. Wow. No. Uh, uh, I worked uh, I worked for United Airlines after uh, afterwards, and that's the first thing they asked me. He says, "Are you ever flown?" <laughs> no. Uh, I'll be darned. Yeah. Uh, one question I'd I'd like to ask: uh, sixty-five missions. Um, how was it for you? How would you prepare? You know, when you knew you were going up for a mission, uh, did you prepare yourself for something like that? And then how about, I know once you're in the mission, you were so busy that you probably didn't think about it. Yeah. But how about afterwards, when after you got back from a mission and you had some, laying in your bunk, you had some free time, did, did that all come rushing back to you? How did, uh, both, yeah, talk I, a little bit about both of those. It, it uh, did. A lot of times, you, if you fly on a hard mission, uh, it was hard to sleep, I mean, you know. Uh, we used to fly a lot uh, uh, close to Paris, and we'd get flack out the butt, and then we see somebody going down, mm. and it was uh, quite painful. Wow! And uh, like that mission in 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 Elders, uh, I lost some close friends, which uh, uh, this Italian boy that was from. Uh, uh, in New York, uh, him and I became good friends, tight, I mean, mm -hmm. close, and uh, 
when they got banged up and I mean shot, and they shot down. And to see his empty bunk there kind of hurt. Oh, how do you how do you get ever get used to that? I don't imagine. Yeah. Able, are you able to get that out of your mind, uh, or is it something yeah, that just it's just quite a. Huh. And like I say, we did get down from briefing. They had they set up a liquor bar for us, and of course I wasn't drinking at that time and everything. But some of my buddies, they the outside of the, my crew, they could drink all. <laughs> how would I mean? That, I guess that would be their way of unwinding. How how would you unwind from from a bad mission? Mostly, was, uh, mostly church. Really? Yeah. yeah. Faith was very important to you? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. quite a thing. We got uh, Schultz, I mean, uh, uh, Pewitz and, uh, and Eddie Carr, we was all the same faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, it was, uh, it took the Lord in quite. I'll bet. Yeah. And like I say, when I had my escapade there with the God, then when I got to the Strange Shrine Cross, uh, and like I said, it was the Lord that saved my butt, not yeah. one, nobody else. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How, how was it with you? Because you had such you had such a tight family. Uh, did Did you get homesick? Did, was that ever a problem? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. I mean, shit, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, my, uh, mom would. Uh, Send some stuff, and it was like uh, I wish I was home doing uh, this instead of it. Oh boy! Yeah, it was. Uh, how, how was uh, communications as far as mail and packages and stuff? Was that pretty, real good? Real good. Okay. Uh, they, uh, I was amazed. To, I mean, packages look, look took a little time, but as far as mail, it would take uh, about. From four to five days for mail to get here to, to our outfit, which wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah for, for them. Conditions. Yeah. And, uh, oh, they, you know, they, uh, right on. Did, did your, did your folks, or particularly your mom, ever talk about after the war, what what she was thinking, how uh, you know, with you in harm's way, did she ever talk about her feelings about that at all, or? No, not no. really. Yeah. Uh -uh. I think she well had it in the back of her mind. She yeah. didn't want to. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I know. Uh, uh, I remember my dad. When. Uh, anyway. I got home that evening and everything. I got up the next morning. I got up and he sat down there, and he never drank. By joy, but that day he did. Is that right? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh. And, then, and then I had a brother-in-law that's, I mean, uh, that served in the service too, and he was. Uh, that was real war veteran, and he. Uh, and he, well, he, yeah, sit down and drink. But I take a sip, but that would be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, but, uh, you, know, uh, you get uh, quite, religion comes to you quite heavy. So, mm -hmm. you know, he, uh, you don't uh, joke about it, that's right. for damn sure. Right. And they just thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Did and you? then, like you say, like seeing some of those guys in the front line and tanks, you know, you respect them too. That's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And and like like me, a lot of a lot of guys that went in to the Air Corps afterwards. They're like jolly guys. They they didn't. Realized that the other guy was just as went through a lot of hardships, just right. Yeah, it's and like you say, when I got back to Santa Ana, California, we went to San Diego one time there on, on leave in the morning, uh, and uh, uh, 
our drill sergeant there said, you guys are going to go down and visit the shipyards today. Show you what it's all about. And we went and went to the goddamn submarine and I said, man, how those guys lived. So you learn to respect the right, Navy. Right, right, right. It's, it's a different thing. Yeah. Uh, well, I say, how in the hell they lived in then close quarters, especially out there, especially with a guy that likes his son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a very, uh, really. and, uh, and that, I had a brother who was stationed over in Wendell, or Utah, and the wife and I took a trip over there uh, on a holiday one time. Of course, we took a flight out of Cheyenne, and it was more like a gambling trip. And my brother was stationed there at Wendover, and I was curious to see that airfield there. We went and visited, and they had quite a museum there. Oh, really? Yeah. And, uh, I said, boy, that was quite a thing over here. And you could see why the training was there. And he went, he went to the Pacific. And I, and I said, no wonder there's a goddamn sand and a goddamn salt. And I said, hey, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it's quite a thing. And I seen the old barracks fair. They were quite a interesting trip. It was wow. Uh, and uh, and uh, and my my dad served in the infantry, and when he seen where I got came home on leave and had my wings, and he said, "There, boy." He says, "I don't know, I don't know," <laughs> <laughs> and, he, huh. and he got. Of course, he, he went through heck though. He had, he uh, was in a battle, one of the battling Germanys and got attacked by mustard gas. Oh. And uh, when he was, uh, I was already about, see, 10, 12, 13, uh, they diagnosed his kidneys were failing, kind of. The mustard gas. Because the mustard gas. Huh. So, and the wife and I were we only married about a, well, we was married about five, six years. And I don't know how he survived. God damn it, mustard gas was shits. Hmm. And, hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and then, my older brother here uh, got involved in a car accident and then uh, he got diagnosed with cancer after he's healed up mm. and he died young. Mm. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the only one in the family living now. Is that right? Original family. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, of course. I had a grandpa who lived to be 97. And a couple of ants that lived over a hundred. So, it's, of course, mm. it's your lifestyle that yeah. uh, makes you survive. Sure. Yeah. And I got a heck of a damn good caregiver over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you guys been married? 56, 57 years. <laughs> yes. yeah. met, her, met her in Fort Collins? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was from Denver, but she used to come and visit her uncle and aunt, and my, they lived here in Collins. And I, they were great friends of mine. Okay. Yeah. So we, and then her sister uh, came down and visited us, and now got them. And so once we uh, got acquainted, it was like a mutual thing, I think. Yeah. It was, yeah. I don't know. It, it's something that, that attracts attracts to a person. Yeah, and, right. And yeah. Have, uh, and marry them. Yeah. And, you know, and, and uh, any children? You have any children? Yes. How many children do you have? Yeah, we had three. Three children. Two boys and a girl. Yeah. And, and how about grandchildren? Great grandchildren? Oh, we got five. Uh, the, the two grand. Uh, children and five, six grand, great grand. <laughs> wow. Okay. 
Grandkids are really tight with us. Oh yeah, oh that's well, wonderful. Well, they come over here. They don't want to leave. They, <laughs> uh, they, they uh, like, uh, see, here's a picture of my. Oh wow, my, my uh, grandkids. <laughs> yeah, that's. They, oh, yeah, they, they got, they come over and spend the night with us and everything, and they, the next day, we don't go home. We don't want to go home. <laughs> Yeah, they did uh, do everything. They, uh, yeah, uh, we we lost a boy in uh, two years ago in March. Oh boy! He had uh, some kind of blood disorder, or something, mm. and they lost him young, forty-two years old. Oh, I'm but, sorry to hear that. Yeah. But uh, he quite a thing. Yeah. Well, Joe, we'll start to wind down this interview. Uh, one question I always like to ask at the end of the interview, uh, how do you think your war experience affected your life, changed your life at all, played a role in your life, or was it just simply a chapter in your life that you went through? What do you think? Uh, I think it was just a chapter in my life. Yeah. I got, I got to accept things as they come and go. And, uh, not really didn't uh, oh, uh, uh, like I say I was my uh, uh, it didn't affect me until oh five six seven years ago when my eyesight started going bad and then my hearing went bad and uh, that's one thing I will let back uh, my air uh, air uh, crew records, everything signifies that my hearing was a loss uh, for kind of that condensed uh, noise. Right, right. Which you couldn't hear a damn thing in that Pratt and Whitney, that 2800 horsepower engines. Wow. So, uh, huh. but they, the VA's been good. They uh, fixed my hearing with the hearing aids and everything. What I do? Of course, in private life, I had my own, but yeah. not quite as good. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad they took care of you. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, is there any statement you would like to make uh, to anybody that's, you know, family and friends that'll watch this video uh, that you'd like to make to kind of close off the interview or not? Is there any? Yeah. Okay. I love I love everybody in my family, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's wonderful. We uh, just came from a funeral uh, yesterday. At uh, I met all my old fam family and everything. We're tight family though. Oh, good. We're real tight. Very good. Real tight. Yeah. They, uh, I had uh, uh, nephews and nieces that I hadn't seen for ages. Boy, and they, it was great to see them. But how oh, wonderful. wonderful! Yeah, I, all my family's been pretty tight. So very good. Yeah. Well, uh, Joe, I want to thank you for sitting down to tell your story today, but more importantly, I want to thank you for your service to our country. Right, thank you, Brad. And uh, like I say, I had a jolly time over there at that gathering. Uh, this is a, a group we went out and leave uh, in uh, Hearns, uh, 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 England. This is Peewitz. He's uh, my flight engineer. This is me, Joe. And this is uh, another tail gunner, an old uh, Francis Benedict, uh, an old friend, and we're very close, all three of us. And this is a picture we met in a reunion in Kansas City in uh, '99. And uh, as you see, there's uh, Benedict, Pewitz, and myself, all three. And this is uh, 50 some years later. Wow. And uh, it was quite a get together, and we still keep close. We, uh, I get uh, early uh, Christmas cards and mail when everything happens. This is my group, uh, a, a crew that was formed in 
this picture was taken in Barksville Field, Louisiana. That's when we first got introduced to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's it, right there. Where was this picture taken, Joe? Do you remember? Uh, that was taken uh, in ignorance of her, in the studio. Uh, 